This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome back to the August edition of MWF Extra. I am now joined by a very good friend of our own, Rolla Missouri, the Executive Vice President of the Cauliflower Alley Club, Carl Lauer. Carl, thank you for joining us once again. Glad to be with you again, Dan. Carl, the past two months on this program, everyone has seen the highlights of the experience that was the 41st Annual Cauliflower Rally Club Reunion. As the Executive Vice President, what are your thoughts on what turned into a, a, a phenomenal week? Well, uh, once again, as usual, it was very, very successful. Uh, we did have a little bit uh, smaller crowd than, than we anticipated, but we were kind of thinking that there because of the heat. You know, it was 112 degrees in Las Vegas. When my wife and I got there Wednesday night, it was 107 at 8 o'clock at night. And a lot of the guys that are up there in their 70s and 80s, we knew they weren't going to be able to make it. But uh, we did have uh, just a hair over 500, and everybody really, really had a good time, and uh, we had some great honorees and some great times. I just, I can't put over the experience enough. And now it almost seems like it's a quick year, Kyle, because in April, it's the 42nd reunion. What do we have in the planning stages right now for the April 21st Cauliflower Alley Club reunion in 2007? <laughs> April 21st is correct. It's at the Riviera Hotel. We are back at the Riviera, uh, the Plaza Hotel, which we had absolutely no complaints or problems with at all. And in fact, we had a lot of nice compliments and everything on the food and everything this last time. But uh, unfortunately, they are in some financial receivership, and the banks and uh, new owners or whoever will be the new owners are not accepting any form of, uh, of, of reunions or banquets or anything. And we were very fortunate to get back into the Riviera because they Vegas is usually booked two, three years in advance. Mm -hmm. And so we are back at the Riviera, April 19th through the 21st. Uh, the newsletters are in the mail. Uh, we again, once again, we have a great lineup of guys that have committed to be there. There are honorees and uh, returning after a two year absence to receive the Luthes Award is going to be Danny Hodge. And uh, Bob Geigel is going to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, we also have other guys being honored that night, including Cowboy Bob Kelly, who all of those down in the southern states know Bob Kelly is as big of a legend as there ever was down there. He's also president of the Gulf Coast Reunion down there. And J.J. Uh, Dillon will be an honoree. Uh, Rock Riddle. A lot of people say, who in the heck is Rock Riddle? Well, Rock was quite a big star up for uh, Vern Gagne over the years, and he was one of the early proxied up blonde strutters that really had a heck of a gimmick and a terrific, terrific wrestler to boot. And today he's one of Hollywood's top producers. He produces uh, TV shows and movies, and uh, Rock will be coming in, uh, one of the honorees. Also, Tito Carrion. Uh, one of the early 50 superstar Mexican wrestlers is long overdue to be honored. Uh, another guy, uh, Duke Myers, uh, worked with uh, guys throughout the South, the Pacific Northwest. Duke is long overdue. And a guy that a lot of people don't know who he is, but he's probably a legend in Canada. You're familiar. I believe you met Bob Leonard, right? Yes, absolutely, Kyle. Well, I don't know of a single wrestler that comes to our reunion that does not know who Bob Leonard is. He's like the godfather of wrestling up in Canada. And Friday night is going to be Canada night, and uh, something new we're starting on Friday night is going to be what we call a tribute night. And we will be doing tributes and uh, honoring type situations uh, for very different or unusual people. And one of the key people that night is going to be Owen Hart. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the Hart family has already told us they can hardly wait to get there. It's long overdue for Owen Hart to be really properly honored. Uh, he lost his life in a tragic accident, as most people know. Uh, and Owen was, was not only a great talent and one of the Hart legacies, he was also a close friend of mine as well as the Caliph Rally Club. I worked with him many times here in Missouri. Uh, so we are doing a tribute to Owen Hart, and we're also having a Canadian segment because uh, Bob Leonard has so many friends that uh, there's a huge group of the guys from Canada that have never made it to the CAC, 
but they want to come down because Bob Leonard is one of the honorees. So that's kind of neat to know that guys that we haven't seen from, or, or never seen some of the major stars will be coming down. Is that going to replace the baloney blowout on the Friday night portion of the reunion? Well, no, it'll be with the baloney blowout. Oh. And, you know how last year how uh, I took the microphone, went around and picked on people and got people involved and all that. It'll, this year will be a similar type thing, but it'll be up on the, on the podium up in there and we'll be having different MCs. Uh, working that there uh, with a lot of surprises and a lot of fun and uh, some ribs, but also some serious stuff when we get to the to the tributes of Owen Hart and uh, and some of the other ones that we have lost whose families are coming in. Uh, the great Yukon Eric, his whole family is coming in. We're going to be honoring Yukon Eric in a tribute. Uh, and also one of the top lady wrestlers, uh, Betty Jo Hawkins, will be honored in a tribute that night. Uh, and so uh, the lady wrestler to be honored that night is Laura Martinez. And uh, guess who our MC is going to be? You might have received your newsletter, so you know, right? I did, Kyle, but I don't want to. I don't want to break the news. I think that's your duty. Uh, well, I'll tell you, he, he's he's pretty fantastic. Uh, I've worked with him on numerous occasions. Uh, he worked for me for a while when I promoted. Uh, we had our feuds, our disagreements. Uh, we've we've kind of gone around the pole many, many times, and uh, we're really very, very close friends. And I always love to tease him. He's the only man that I know that physically defeated Superman on the screen, <laughs> and that's Pepper Martin. That's right. He's not only well known from his days in professional wrestling, but from his days in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, many, many movies, somewhere between 85 and 100 movies he's, he has made. But people don't realize he was also a major wrestling star for many years. He is from Canada originally. Uh, he held many, many titles. Uh, uh, his matches and feuds with Pat Patterson were, were legendary. Uh, his fights with uh, killer buddy Austin, uh, his teaming uh, with, uh, um, oh, uh, uh, Don, I can't think of Don's last name, the other proxy of blonde that used to have the matches with Freddie Blassie. Uh, my wife, I my, have a senior moment, I guess you could say, but him, them as a team just held California for years, and then Pepper went on to become one of the most sought-after bookers in the wrestling business. Uh, that's when he started working with me, where he started booking one of my promotions in California. He booked up in San, San Francisco. Uh, he booked over in Texas. He booked down in the, in the Carolinas. Uh, he's just, just a, a, a legend amongst the wrestlers. A lot of fans don't realize just how big he was in the wrestling business. But then he also had 12 years as the voice of wrestling all through the Pacific Northwest and San Francisco. So he, he's a pretty funny, fun, fun MC. I think he'll have a lot of fun because he knows everybody. And if he don't know you by the weekend, he will know you. Well, he's had a distinguished career. That's a very interesting choice to have as the MC of the event this year. I should say next year, I'm sorry. Yeah, next year in April. And to uh, top it all off, he's promised us a surprise co MC. He won't tell us who was going to help him. Oh, really? People are speculating on all kinds of things because of his huge Hollywood connection. So uh, I don't know. I know Pepper knows just about everybody in Hollywood. And I've been to lunch with Pepper in, in California. And uh, joining us for lunch was uh, Norm Cosby and uh, uh, Jonathan Winters. And I mean, he knows just about everybody in Hollywood. So uh, who knows who, who, who he might have as a co-MC. But he says, don't worry. He says, uh, uh, if, if people will have them crying and laughing at the same time. Well, that can be a lot of fun when you get a, a you know professional. Like we enjoyed Bobby Heenan for all them years, and uh, and Bobby was was a great MC for us. And uh, after three years, he felt someone else should take it. And so last year we just kind of filled in. We Mark Nolte did a nice job one year, and uh, and people kind of want to see different things. And so uh, well, this year we were just fortunate to get Pepper Martin. Well, it should be a fabulous week. I'm counting down the days to it already, Kyle. Banquet tickets, I believe, they're on sale now for those that want to get an early start on things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they can. Uh, in the newsletter is the form, and uh, they, 
and we'll have everything up on the on the website within the next week or ten days. Uh, we kind of wanted to wait till the newsletter came out so the website didn't overshadow or undershadow the newsletter. And in there, in the newsletter, is your banquet order form and membership form and all that. And uh, one of the things that people ask us that we're, we we still don't really have an answer to be really honest with you is the wrestling seminar. Uh, there's just so many legal problems that have come up all of a sudden and liability problems. Uh, the Riviera Hotel has flat told us no wrestling. Really? Yeah, we, there will be, we, we will not do a wrestling show in our hotel. We, we just don't accept the liability. Uh, and even though we, you know, offered to have a local promoter cover it and so forth and so on, they said no, the, the hotel does not want an actual wrestling show like we've been doing the last three or four years. Could there be a seminar? Beg your pardon? Could there still be the seminar? Well, we're hoping to do a seminar, and again, this isn't totally confirmed. Uh, we want to do it. We can do it at the Riviera. We, they'll give us the space for that. They just don't want, like the, the general manager, we just don't want guys running around in their wrestling attire and, uh, and quote, being in character around people that are there for not part of your group. And your group is important to us, but it only represents seven or 800 of the 6,000 that are in the building. And, uh, and we have to bow to that there. And uh, the plaza told us the same thing. They said that when you do come back to us, uh, there's problems with wrestling in Vegas. I don't know what it is, but uh, they just said no. But we want to do a seminar. What I was leading up to is uh, a seminar that most independent wrestlers never, ever have the opportunity to really be involved in. And that there is a seminar uh, where myself, uh, uh, Nick Bockwinkel, Red Bastine, Dick Byers, uh, uh, Killer Kowalski, so many of those that have been around the business for a long time, we would have classes or seminars, so to speak, on <coughs> taxes. I'll, I'll guarantee you 90% of the young guys out there wrestling today have no idea what great tax advantages there is to be a licensed independent wrestler. There's, there's huge tax. Most of these guys have jobs. They're paying taxes. There's huge deductions available if you are a licensed professional anything and are losing money. And basically, every independent wrestler I know is losing money. Uh, I think that's a pretty safe statement to make, Carl. You know, I mean, uh, some of these smaller shows, these, these, these young guys may make anywhere from 5 to $50, but they travel 200 miles to do it. They don't realize that 41 cents a mile to drive is tax deductible. I mean, there's so many things that have never, they've never been taught. Another thing, when I talk with a lot of these young wrestlers, as when I go out either for the state of Missouri to some of these independent shows, or guys that I've talked to in Vegas at the last four or five seminars, I ask them, how did you develop your character? Why are you called so-and-so? Well, I don't know the guy that trained me said I should be that. They don't understand the, the, the mechanics of the personality. No one's ever taught them that. No one's ever taught them how to do a television interview. Half them guys are scared to death. You put a microphone in front of them. Uh, no one's ever taught them how do you approach a promoter? How do you, does a promoter decide if he wants to use you or not? There's so many things, you know, the, when you walk up to the boss in a company, you better know how to control yourself and act in what you are. And these guys have never taught any of this. Well, that's the sad state of what has turned into now is acceptable professional wrestling is that unprofessionals are training those that don't know any better how to do it. That's right. You know, Red Bastine and I had a class for a couple of years in California, and out of that class came Sting, who is still working. In fact, he's on a big pay-per-view tonight. Uh, out of that class uh, came the Ultimate Warrior, uh, Steve R.D., uh, the Angel of Death. These guys all went on to make very, very good money, but they were taught how do you work with a promoter? What does a promoter expect from you? What does a booker want from you? Uh, when can your ego come overshadow your contract? These are things that they don't tell these kids that stuff anymore. Right. They go in there with an inflated ego thinking that promoter can't live without them. And uh, it, it, it's sad that some great talents will never, ever be discovered, mainly because no one ever taught them how to get them their foot in the door. There's too much of the blind leading the blind going on. 
Well, that's true. There's, uh, I forget how many wrestling schools there are in the United States now. I went on the internet one time and I, I quit counting after a couple of hundred. Yeah, that's pathetic. I'm Dick and Harry, doctor, calling himself a pro wrestling and running a school and, and teaching everything uh, about nothing. We have a couple of good schools in this area, and then there's so many run by riffraffs. You wouldn't even believe it, Kyle. It's horrible here in the New England area. It's all over. It's all over here in Missouri. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we can't control the schools. There's probably 10 or 12, quote, pro wrestling schools teach you how to be a professional wrestler by a former so-and-so. And no one ever heard of the former so-and-so. Yeah. He's not listed anywhere, but he claims he was a world champion, and he was probably a world champion, you know, of Joe's wrestling promotion in his dad's backyard, population 12, and biggest audience has been 10. But he bought a belt and made himself a world champion, and we're seeing this all the time. I, I did a show recently here in, in our area. Uh, they had 26 paid. Wow. Uh, and it cost $150 for the license to do the show. The promoter had to pay $500 to get his license and another uh, $500 for bonds, and he had 26 people paid $7. Well, at the, again, it's the blind leading the blind. World champion. Now, how can he be world champion in a little small town and world champion. I mean, and these guys, you know, everybody makes belts nowadays, too, and you can get a belt made up and be world champion of, uh, and call yourself anything you want. And, uh, and it's, killing, it, it, it's killing the independent promotion, guys. Oh, without a doubt. It's destroyed the independents, these riffraffs and these low lives that just walk into the business and think that it's theirs because they can rent a ring or rent a hall, and, you know, they turn away so many fans, they don't realize that they're hurting a business that they profess to care about. That's right. It, 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 it's, a, it's a universal problem around the United States, and so many states deregulated wrestling. We still regulate it, so when we go to a, when I go to a show or any of the other inspectors go to a show, we can pretty much tell if this show is even going to, if they'll ever do a second show. Yeah. And they ask you advice, but they don't listen to it. Right. You know, uh, we, we have several very great promotions here in Missouri. Harley Races is in the top five fundraisers for our high schools. Uh, he runs two to four shows a month, and but he puts on a solid, old-fashioned, good wrestling show. Uh, 85 to 90 percent in the ring. Uh, nobody's allowed to pick up the microphone uh, of the wrestlers except if there is a challenge or something that made. I mean, there may be five minutes of the whole night with a wrestler holding the microphone. The rest is all nonstop action. Isn't that refreshing? Yeah. Yeah, you know, the way Harley Race was, was, was when he wrestled, his promotions are like that. We have another promotion here, too, the old South Broadway Wrestling Club, which is <coughs> one of the oldest wrestling clubs in America. That's where Lou Thay started, Pat O'Connor, Buddy Rogers. This is the Mecca. This is Sam Muchnick, the original athletic club where the, all these guys started. Orville Brown all, all came out of there, Strangler Lewis. And that club is still running. And I think it had its first match there in 1923 or something like that. Wow. Same building, same ring, same everything. It seats 400 people. Once a month they run. Once a month, 400 tickets are sold. Wow. Well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, if, if, if anybody who's a wrestling fan, uh, if they ever, if they can ever find a time to come into St. Louis, uh, find contact the South Broadway Athletic Club and find out when they're running, because you'll see a, a good old solid arena type show like, like what has been done for, you know, what, 80 years now. Wow, that's quite a statement. But Kyle, to get back a little bit more on the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion, I noticed when I came home, I always like to gouge people's reactions to the reunion. And this year, they're on some of the, what you'd call wrestling fanboys, there was some negative remarks written about the reunion experience along with you. I, I don't understand why people have had negative thoughts about these reunions, Kyle. Do you have any insight into this? A negative market by who? Uh, I mean, about myself? About yourself and the reunions, they'd say that you know, oh, they'll, a, they'll give her an award to anyone that walks through the door as long as they'll show up. You know, that they need fresh blood in the Cauliflower Alley Club to try and bring it into the next era, I guess. And there's some people that had some negative thoughts. Of course, they don't put their names along with it. But I just, I was really surprised to find the negativity towards what I found to be a very positive experience. 
Yeah, well, there. You, no matter what you do, you will you'll never please everybody. I saw some on, uh, I believe it was WrestlingClassics.com chat board or something like that. Someone emailed it to me, so I went and looked at it, and uh, I I saw some stuff on there where uh, claiming that Nick Bockwinkel, myself, and Red Bastine uh, were rude. We didn't. We weren't friendly to these people. Uh, they were apparently fans. Um, I know not a single one. I have never, ever, to my knowledge, refused to greet someone, say hello to them, or take time to talk to someone or answer a question. I know Nick is the same way. But you'll have some people that will be... Uh, no, I don't. I don't want. I don't like to badmouth people. But to give you an example, I had one guy come up to me, and he had a whole stack of pictures. He found one of the old College Rally Club uh, uh, newsletters, and in there, there were, I put a letter down there. And Dean Silverstone, who does our newsletters, had found an old picture of me with the mask on as the boss man. And he took that picture, and uh, and that was just put in there. It's just from the executive vice president had this your picture of this guy with the mask on. And uh, in a recent article, I put down there that I was the original mask boss man. Well, this guy had found this picture, went to the trouble to have it blown up, and made about 50 pictures, copies. And when he came up to me, he didn't say, would you please sign this, or could I have your autograph, or would you sign it as the boss man? He threw them on the table, he said, sign these, hurry up, I'm in a hurry. And I said, well, what makes you think this is me? And he said, well, I know it's you. And I said, well, how do you know that? Well, I just know that. I, I spent money to have these pictures made, sign them for me. I mean, and I told the guy to take the pictures, uh, and I would not sign them. I said, no, I, I, don't, I, I won't sign them for you. And he got very upset with me. But his attitude, he didn't say, would you please kiss my foot, drop dead. He threw them down. When you have a stack of 50 pictures, he's strictly going to put them on eBay and sell them. Probably. You know, uh, I'm sure he does not need 50 pictures <laughs> of me uh, unless he's planning on doing something with them. Unless he's a stalker or something, Kyle. And and there are people like that. I mean, we, we have uh, some, some very... Obnoxious, obnoxious fans that they don't, they really don't belong coming to the CAC meetings because they're there strictly to be obnoxious. Be autograph hounds, basically. You no, know, they're comedy autograph hounds, or they've been on the website, on the internet, so often that they think they know and understand the wrestling business. Uh, that's uh, we could go on for about three hours on that subject. You're 150 percent right. Themselves, uh, they insult your intelligence when they come up and uh, and say, "Well, uh, we know that wrestling's fake, but uh, uh, you know we come anyway because uh, you know and they they don't know what they're talking about." but they know enough to literally insult your intelligence. Like Red Bastien says, that's why I've got two artificial hips, one knee, one shoulder, uh, and two back surgeries because of fake wrestling. Yeah, bingo. You know, and the same thing with Harley Race with a, with a steel shaft 18 inches long up his back and both hips and knees replaced, all from, quote, fake wrestling. Well... They'll never know unless they actually did the dance, Kyle, as they say. There was one guy that, I mean, he was very, very, very outspoken of, about me and Red and Nick, but he comes every year. I won't, I won't give him the credit of naming him on, on the air like this, but he's a wrestling fan and one of the last, he's, he's fairly well known amongst the uh, uh, chat groups and stuff like that. He always puts his two cents in on about 20 different chat groups, and uh, he knows just enough to be dangerous, but not enough to be intelligent. And, and he, he is uh, one of these guys, he put down that we can go and blank ourselves and, you know, he, 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 he'll never come back. And he's done this two or three times, and he comes back every year. And there, there are just some people that, I mean, we could put him up in the front row, uh, have uh, Red Bastien and Nick Bockwinkle sing lullabies to him, and he'd still find something to gripe about. Well, the, you, have, you have people like that in every group, Kyle. But we're right, just about out of time right now in this segment. I want everybody to check out caulifloweralleyclub.org. And, Kyle, in a sentence or two, sum up what the fans can expect in 2007 in Vegas. Well, 2007, another great, great evening. Uh, back up to six or 700 people. We expect at least six or 700 people. Uh, those that were there last year, Mia Monsters and Dick Byers, have promised to come back and not body slap me again. 
and um, and just just come back and I guarantee if you come once you won't you'll never regret it without a doubt we're going to take a brief time out we'll be back